So, most welcome to the Jesuit Historical Institute in Africa. Mm -hmm. um, if you just introduce yourself briefly. Yeah. My name is George Deutsch, I'm an associate professor for Commonwealth uh, History in the University of Oxford. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, that's great. And the topic you've given us is slavery and abolition in East Africa from colonial fairy tales to the study of memory. Uh, can you just briefly say what this is all about? It's about two things. One is about the, the, the history of slavery in East Africa, but it's also about uh, the way in which historians wrote about that history. And I noted that um, the colonial history and the early nationalist history had little to say about it, whereas the social historians of the 80s and the memory historians of the 90s uh, might be more useful uh, to shed some light on this issue. But the origins of all this is that um, in the history of slavery in Africa, Perhaps the people who were most concerned with it, the slaves, have not given enough room uh, for the agency. So what I try to attempt in my, my work is to show that they are not just merely victims of um, domination and repression, but there was a room of maneuver of what they could do, when they could use it. And that was my reward, was my research was about the agency of slaves in history. That's great. I think uh, that explanation let me ask another question about the state of the study of slavery and, and slave trade really in the academia. What, what would you say is the state at the moment? Is there great interest? Is there great research being done on that, great publications? I think the, the uh, research, if you like, the easy research has been done. The easy research is basically the one which is focusing on European documents in European languages. But um, Swahili sources, Arab sources have not been used to that extent because it takes special language um, uh, abilities. I also think that the oral history has not been exhausted at all. I never got beyond you know, the, the, the surface um, just to see the, the lay of the landscape but not really understanding how it, how it is constructed. And so, to some extent, talking about memory is try to encourage people to, to see this as an valuable and, and, and lively issue in, in uh, undertaking research. Oh, great. Um, again, I'm led to asking another question. I guess most research is directed to areas of interest and someone would easily ask why study slavery and slave aboli abolition of slavery at all? What would you say is the importance of this particular topic, especially to people in Africa, for example? There is a great saying by an American author, I think his name is Faulkner. He said, um, the past is never dead, it is not even past. And what he meant is that the past left um, a legacy, which is um, defining our present. And in many ways, um, ideologically but also materially, we are still involved with the effects of slave trading and imperialism. And then to understand the present, um, we need to understand the past. And of course the old argument is, if you understand the past, you understand the future. So my interest in imperialism and, and colonialism and on the one hand and colonial slavery on the other is an attempt to understand the present better. Slavery has affected uh, different areas in Africa in different ways. In some areas the legacy is very thin and you have to dig very deep. In some areas it's, it's a burning issue of the present. So it depends a little bit on what kind of societies we're talking about and what kind of slavery we are, we are encountering in this. So it is an, is an issue, issue of the present, uh, not just merely of the past. Um, I'm led to ask you about sources. You mentioned uh, that uh, sources in Kiswahili and in Arabic has not been studied enough. And certainly I know from my own experience that uh, mostly we read English sources, sources written uh, by, I mean, from the point of view of the British and my question to you is, how about German sources? Do, do they exist and are they accessible? No, I wish I could say I have exhausted the German sources and that's a definite study of the end of it, but it's not true. I, I, I know that there are um, more, there are other sources uh, which one could explore. And I think the um, particular record of missionary societies might be a particularly good um, uh, source for, for records on slavery. I mean, think about it that, that most, uh, some of the Catholic Christians were actually German uh, missionary societies, but particularly also the Protestant uh, um, uh, 
domain, uh, those records have not been fully explored. And there's lots of work to be done in German sources on, on slavery in East Africa, particularly in the missionary field. Now, with the official archive, um, most of the stuff has been destroyed either by the German administration in Tanzania or during the second world war. Mission resources might be in Germany. Okay. Might be a good field for study. Mm -hmm. yeah. My last question to you is probably uh, a kind of advice to us at the Historical Institute. The Jesuit Historical Institute is really founded to try and enable people in Africa, in this region of Africa, to access certain important sources in studying historical subjects. Uh, I wonder from your point of view, what kind of material should we look for to collect and bring here and make them accessible to people, especially people at the level of the masters, uh, trying to research, for example, the topic of slavery. What kind of records, what kind of books, what kind of material should we be looking for? I mean, I firmly believe that the historians are made in the archive. Um, you cannot teach uh, you can teach uh, master students that much, but I think one of the main parts of what you're doing is um, inducing people to learn to take original and primary research. And that also means that you have to use the sources which are available, i.e. in the Kenya Archive, in the Missionary Societies, perhaps in Tanzania, um, particularly in the, in the National Archive. And I think um, that, that might um, uh, one avenue um, uh, to explore further what are the kind of sources which are readily available for people to study in official archives and in missionary archives. One other uh, element uh, of study would be to uh, significantly reduce the cost of undertaking research abroad by more fully engaged with what is available on the internet. It is amazing what the British, for instance, publish about their records or the French. And for instance, all parliamentary papers are now published um, and the trade to slave records are, you know, it's so huge that not a single person can, can actually work through in a lifetime through these records. So there might be some, some other records which are available through the internet, um, accessible to students at an institution like this, they would like to study, because they are available now. They become more and more available. I, I would be surprised to see any more sources coming out of that.